All right, so in this lesson, we're going to look at um, logarithmic functions. And so the four things you're going to look at in this particular lesson is this. So number one, you're going to learn how to change from logarithmic to exponential form. Number two, you're going to change from exponential to logarithmic form. Number three, you're going to evaluate the logarithms without using a calculator. So do not use a calculator. And number four, you're going to use basic logarithmic properties. All right, now, before we discuss what logarithmic functions are or what logarithms are, let's kind of review something from inverse functions. So inverse functions are needed in order to understand logarithmic functions. All right, so as a review, let's look at this problem. So this, this came from one of our sections on inverse functions. So remember the notation. So the notation is, remember this, this exponent here, um, negative 1, um, really is, is not an exponent. It just refers to f inverse. So when we talked about exponents before, we we discussed it in terms like this, like 3 squared. So 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is uh, 9, right? And then 3 raised to the negative second power is 1 over 3 squared, which would be 1 over 9. So, so don't confuse these exponents with what you see here. So this reads f inverse, not f to the negative 1. All right, so that was discussed when we looked at exponential functions. All right, now, all right, so let's, re let's remind ourselves how to find the inverse of this function. All right, so remember the first thing you had to do was replace f of x with y. So we have y equals 3 divided by x plus 2. And then the next thing you had to do was you had to interchange the uh, the variables. And the reason for that, if you recall, is because inverse functions are symmetrical about the line y equals x. So meaning this. So, so let me just remind you about an example. So here's, here's a line y equals x right here. So let me go ahead and denote it as y equals x. And notice that this function right here is symmetrical about the line y equals x, and you get this function. And so notice, if it's symmetrical about the line y equals x, if, if um, two functions are symmetrical about the line y equals x, like you see here, those are symmetrical about this line. Notice that, that um, this point here, when you reflect it about this line, you get that point. That point here, when you reflect it about that line, you get that point, and so on. Those are inverses. So notice the notation, f and f inverse, okay? All right, the other thing I want you to recognize, see this point right here? Um, the point here that was 0, 1. When you reflect it about the line y equals x, you get the point 1, 0. And whatever this point here is, let's say I'm making this up now. Let's say this is 1.2, 2.8. I made this up. When you reflect it about the line, you're going to get um, 2.8, 1.2, okay? The point is this. When you look at those inverses, x becomes, uh, see right here? The x-coordinate becomes the y-coordinate, and the y-coordinate becomes the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate becomes the y-coordinate, the y-coordinate becomes the x-coordinate. So meaning that the the variables are interchanged, the coordinates are interchanged. So that's why you interchange the, the variables here. So this becomes x equal 3 divided by y plus 2. So that's where we're at. Okay, now, okay, so now what we're going to do is remember that once, once you interchange the, the variables, the next thing to do is to solve for y you got to get y by itself. And once you get y by itself, that is your inverse. 
All right, now we know of a way to get y by itself. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite x as x divided by 1 equal 3 divided by y plus 2. And so to solve for y, we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the least common denominator. And the least common denominator is y plus 2. All right, so I'm going to get x times y plus 2 equal 3 divided by y plus 2 times y plus 2. All right, so all I did was I took this equation and I multiplied both sides by y plus 2 to clear those fractions. Uh, notice that this denominator had the variable I'm looking for. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the parentheses. So I have x times y plus x times 2, which is 2x, equal, and then these divide out, and you get 3. And remember, I'm trying to solve for y, right? Well, the only term, knows there are three terms altogether, this term, this term, and then this term. The only term that contains a variable y is this one. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. We're going to bring the 2x to the other side. And so then I get x times y equals 3 minus 2x. And then to get y by itself, we're going to divide both sides by x, just like this. And so we get y equals 3 minus 2x divided by x. And that is your inverse. So therefore, we're going to say, Therefore, we're going to say f inverse equals 3 minus 2x divided by x. All right, so that's the inverse. So, so when, when, we, when we did the inverse functions, remember the process, replace f of x with y, then we interchange the coordinates and we solve for y. And in this particular case, we knew enough algebra, we knew about properties of equality that we can multiply both sides by an expression, we can add a number to both sides, uh, we can divide both sides by a number, things like that, um, to get our inverse. All right, And notice that, that once, once I interchange the coordinates, the, these, this, this equation is equivalent to this equation, is equivalent to this equation, is equivalent to this equation, is equivalent to that equation. All right? Okay, so that was a review of how to find the inverse. All right, now, let's look at this example here. Okay, so, so one of the things you learned in a previous section when we talked about exponential functions was graphing an exponential function. So here's the graph of an exponential function. And so the function is 2 to the x. All right, and you could actually use a t-table to, to graph this, right? So if x is 0, I get 2 to the 0, which is 1. So you see this point right here, 0, 1, right here. If x is, um, let's say, 1, I get 2 to the first, which is 2. So notice 1, 2 is right here. I'm sorry. Yeah, 1, 2 is right here. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and so on. If, if x is 2, I get 2 squared, which is 4, and 2, 4 is right here. And remember, all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote, and that horizontal asymptote is this constant. Well, if you notice, f of x, which is 2 to the x in this case, I can write as 2 to the x plus 0. So my horizontal asymptote, I'll denote it as ha, my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And y equals 0 is the same thing as the x-axis. All right, and so remember, an exponential function has a property in that it rises or falls rapidly on one side, and on the other side, it gets closer and closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. All right, now, one of the things you learned about inverse functions is this. So still reviewing the idea of inverse functions. Only one-to-one -one functions have inverses. So when you, if you go back and you review the section on inverse functions, you will see that um, what, if a function is one-to-one, -one, it will have an inverse. And then the question is, do you remember what we mean by a one-to-one -one function? 
Well, first of all, in order to remember what it means to what it means for a function to be one to one, make sure you understand what a function is. So remember, a function is a relation in which for each x coordinate, and remember the set of x coordinates is your domain, there's exactly one y coordinate, and the set of y coordinates would be your range. And so if I go back and I look at this graph here, which is, which is y equals 2 to the x, I know that this is a function because remember, if a graph is given, we can determine if it's a function by using the vertical line test. So notice that, that all these vertical lines intersect the, the graph once each time, meaning that, that for this x-coordinate, there's only one y-coordinate. For this x-coordinate, there's only one y-coordinate, whatever that coordinate is. Um, for this x coordinate, x equal 2, there is only one y coordinate, which in this case is 4. All right, so that's what that means. Okay. Now the question becomes what is a one to one function? Well, remember, a one to one function, so remember when, when we talked about, let me go back and get this. So when we looked at this right here, we said that inverse functions are symmetrical about the line y equal x, right? Okay, and so when we when we found the inverse, we then knew that one of our steps, we had to interchange the coordinates. y becomes x, x becomes y. All right, so that means this then. If a function, if the definition of function says a relation in which for each x-coordinate there's only one y-coordinate, then when we interchange those, that means this then. All right, so a one-to-one -one function. A function in which for each, and remember we're going to interchange them now, so x becomes right here, we just interchange it. x becomes y, y becomes x. So a function in which for each y-coordinate there is only one x coordinate. Okay? And so when we talked about functions, we use the vertical line test, right? When we talk about inverse functions, we use the horizontal line test. So that's so if you hopefully you remember this, but notice that that if a graph is given, then we can use the horizontal line test to determine if the graph represents a one-to-one -one function. So if I go back, let me see if I can find it. So if I go back here, we know this is a function because it passes a vertical line test. But well, my question to you then, is this a one-to-one -one function? Because if it is a one-to-one -one function, then it has an inverse. And if you notice, I can use the horizontal line test and no matter where I I draw this horizontal line, it's going to intersect the graph once each time. So, so this, so this exponential function, this exponential function is a one-to-one -one function, meaning that it has an inverse. And if you think about it, all exponential functions, all exponential functions, because remember they all look like this, or it could, it, I mean, it, it, it could do this, right? It could do something like this, but it all has that same shape. So all exponential functions will be a one-to-one -one function. So all exponential functions, exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions. So they all have an inverse. So an exponential function will have an inverse. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at this. Okay. So we, we just saw that all 
exponential functions have an inverse. So let's look at the basic exponential function. So, so f of x equal b to the x. All right, so, so that's our basic exponential function. It has that form. And what I want to do is I want to find that inverse. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace f of x with y. So I get y equal b to the x. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're, you're going to interchange the variables. So x equal b to the y. And then you're going to solve for y. Now here's where the problem is. See, this y is in the exponent, right? And, that, and that's what we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve for y. When I did this one, when I interchanged the, the, um, the variables, and at that point we want to solve for y, it was easy. We knew how to solve for y. We had enough algebra, we had enough information that we learned that we could easily have solved for y. We multiply both sides by the least common denominator. We use the distributive property. We use properties of equality. We subtracted 2x from both sides. And we again, we use property of equality. We divided both sides by x to get y by itself. So we knew how to do that. The problem is right here, we don't know how to get y by itself here because y is in the exponent. And so now here's where we learn a new definition. So, so this equation right here, to solve for y, we're going to define this exponent as a logarithm. So y, let me put it right here, or right here, I'll put it right here. y is defined to be a logarithm. So log. All right, now. All logarithms have a base, and that base is listed as a subscript, so you're going to see me put it right here. All logarithms have a base. That base here is the same as this base, so this base is B, okay? And, and the only thing, remember, so, so equivalent, so notice when, when I went from from this equation to this equation, I still had the same variables. I had x and y in every case. So here, if you notice, I'm missing the x, right? Well, the, the x is what you're taking the log of. So this would be the log of x. So this, to get y by itself, we defined the exponent of this exponential as a logarithm. And so, so always remember that this, this exponent is defined to be a logarithm. And so, so this equation is equivalent then, equivalent to this equation. Okay, now remember that this is going to be important in a little while. So when we get, when we get to these objectives right here, the first two, and even the others, when we get to those, we're going to need to remember this. So x equal b to the y is equivalent to, remember, solve for y. y is defined to be a logarithm. That base here is the base of the logarithm. And the argument, which you're taking the log of, is this variable or this expression or this number, whatever. It could be a number on the other side. Okay? All right. Now, this is what's important. So you have to remember this now. Um, x equal b to the y is equivalent to, remember, solve for the, just, just think of the exponent. So y equals, and we just remember what you said, the exponent is a logarithm. So log, and then the rest is easy. The base of the log is the base of the exponential. And then the argument, which you're taking the log of, is what's on the other side. All right? And then that's what you have to remember. Once you remember that relationship, once you remember that relationship, then all of this becomes easy. All right, so let's look at the first one. All right, so here we go. Number one, so the direction says write each equation in its equivalent exponential form. So once you know this relationship, you can go from an exponential to a logarithm or from a logarithm to an exponential. It is always easier to go from a logarithm to an exponential because to go from a logarithm to exponential, look at the base first. 
base is b, so you can say b to the, and the exponent is going to be what's on the other side, equals the argument. b to the y equals the argument. Okay? That's always the easiest. All right. So let's do that here then. So 8 equals the log of 6,561 base b. So that's how you read this. Or you can read it like this now. You could say 8 equals log base b, I'm sorry, base 3 of 6,561. All right, so, so you can read it in one of two different ways. But you want to change it to an exponential form. All right, so the first thing you do is you look at the base. The base is 3, so you're going to say 3. And then the exponent. Remember, exponential form, think of exponents. And so you're going to say 3 to the 8th power, so make sure it looks like an exponent, equal the argument, which is 6,561. And that's it. That's all you do. It is not that difficult, is it? All right, let's get the next one. Let's, let's remind ourselves how to read this. So 8 equals the log of 27 base b. Or you could say 8 equals the log base b of 27. So just remember, log of 27. All right, so we're going to change it to exponential. Look at the base first. The base is b. So b raised to the exponent, the other side, so that's 8, equals the argument, which is 27. And that's it. All right, You're, we're just using this relationship. That's what we're using. Going from exponential, I'm sorry, going from logarithm to exponential. Number three log of 10 base 3 equal y or log base 3 of 10 equal y. All right, so we have this log equation. I want to change it to an exponential. So I want to change it to an exponential. And remember, when you change it to exponential, you don't see that log anymore. So you're going to say the base first, which is 3. And notice in each of those cases, the base looks like a subscript, doesn't it? So make sure when you write it, Make sure you, when you write it, um, they look like subscripts. All right, so you're going to say 3 to the y. So y is your exponent. Make sure it looks like an exponent. Equals the argument, which is 10. And that's all you do. All right, let's look at this one. 3 to the 0 equal 1. 3 to the 0 equal 1. And so that's it. So it is so much easier... It is so much easier to go from a log equation to its equivalent exponential form. All right, now let's look at the next one. Okay, so now we're going to look at going the other way now. So now we're going to go from an exponential to a log. Students have a little bit harder trouble, trouble doing that. But just remember what we said. So when we said this, we said the exponent, which is y, equal, and then the log. And the base is this base here. And then the only thing left is x, and that's going to be your argument. All right, so just try and remember that way. So let's look at this now. So I want to change this exponential form to log form. All right, so first of all, what's your exponent? Well, my exponent is 4. So you're going to say 4 equal, and then you're going to put log. And then the base of that log is the base that you see here. So if my exponent was 4, then 3 is your base. Make sure it looks like a subscript, though. See how I wrote it? And then the only thing left is x, and then you put that. And then always check yourself. Go backwards. 3 to the 4th equals x, and that's what you had. It's not difficult, is it? All right, let's do this one. Write the exponent first. The exponent is 4. Equal, and then log. The base of the log is the base of this equation, if 4 is your exponent, then b is your base. When you write it, though, make sure it looks like a subscript. That's important. Everything you write mathematically has to be correct. And then the only thing left is 16, and that's your argument. So 4 equals the log base b of 16, or 4 equals the log of 16 base b. So you get the, you, you, you understand the pattern, right? All right, so let's look at the other one. So my exponent is y, so it's going to say y equal log. The base of my log is the base that you see here. Well, my base is e. Make it look like a subscript. And then 28. 
and that's it. All right, that's all you write. Now, let me just say this. One of the things you learned is that the, the log base E is the natural logarithm. So when you look at your calculator, let me see if I can quickly get my calculator. All right, so when you, when you look at your calculator, so your calculator has two log functions. You have LOG and you have LN, right? So meaning this, meaning if I, and we'll just go ahead and just mention it now, if I take the log of, let's say, 5, all right, if I take the log of 5, so log LOG, oops, I'm trying to get rid of that glare, uh, all right, right here. So the log LO, oops, LOG of 5 and press equal, I get this, this um, number, okay? If I take the log of, let's say, 100, so log of 100, I just get 2, right? If I take the natural log of, let's say, 6, the natural log of, six, I get that number. And you can't see, but the decimal is right here, um, 1.79. If you take the, the natural log of, let's say, 0 0.6, natural log of 0 0.6, this time you get a negative number. So it's like negative zero, you can't see it very well, but 0 0.51 and so on. All right, the point's this though. Notice notice when, when I looked at this one, the base was three. When I looked at this, the base is E and so on. Notice that that when, when I take the log here or LN, LN stands for natural log, natural log, there's no base listed but it's understood to be a 10. So log of five is understood to have, the logarithm is understood to have base 10. The natural log of six means this, the log base E. So natural log of six means the same thing as saying log base E of six, okay? Log of five means the same thing as saying log of five base 10. All right, now whenever the base is 10, Whenever the base is 10, that's called a common logarithm. But the base has to be 10. That's called a common logarithm. If the base is E, if the base is E, then that's the natural logarithm. So base E is called the natural logarithm. And whenever the base is E, we just use LN. LN for a natural log. So just, just look at it backwards. N is natural, L is log. Okay? All right. Now let's look at number four. Okay, so number four, we have, so notice my exponent. Look, look, look for an exponent. So your exponent is negative three. So you're going to say negative three equals L of G. Your base is eight. And then the only thing left over is one over 512. And it, then that's your argument. And that's all you do. Very simple, right? All right, now over here, you, you might say, well, I don't see an exponent here, but you remember something. You remember that, that a, a um, radical notation, see this is radical, cube root of 64, radical notation you can always write in rational notation as, as, as a rational exponent. So the cube root of 64, I can write as 64 to the one-third. So the cube root of 64 means 64 to the one-third. And now I have my exponents. My exponent is one-third equal LOG. Your base is 64. And then my argument is 4. So one-third equals the log of 4, base 64. Or one-third equals the log base 64, 4. All right, just make sure that those bases look like a subscript. And that 4 is horizontal to LOG. 1, under, 1 divided by 112 is horizontal to LOG. Your base is 8, subscript. Okay? All right. And then I think there's one more with number 6. 
All right, let's, let's look at number six. Very simple, not difficult at all. What's your exponent? You can easily see the exponent here. It's negative four. Equal LOG. Your base is one tenth. So just write one tenth, just like this. And then the argument is going to be 10,000. And you can always check yourself by going backwards. One tenth raised to negative four equals the argument, which is 10,000. All right. Okay, so, so that was, if I can find it real quick, that was the first two objectives, I believe. Um, might be, here we go. All right, so that was the first two. So we now know how to change a logarithm to an exponential, and we now know how to change an exponential to a logarithm. And all that involved was just knowing this equivalent um, expressions or equivalent equations go from exponential form to log form, or going from log form to exponential. All right, now, this is where we're going to start looking at problems where we evaluate logarithms without using a calculator, okay? And you may say, well, well, how can I do that without using a calculator? It's very easy. All you need to know is this right here, okay? So let's go. All right, so I want to find out without, without using a calculator what the log of 16 base 4 is. Okay, so here's what I would do. So I want to find out what this equals to, right? I want to find out what that equals to. All right, what I would do is, is I would either let this be an X or a Y, whatever you want to. Um, some students like using a symbol like a box or something because they know they have to place a number in this box or something in that box. And so now, notice this looks like a log equation now, right? See that equal sign? So that looks like a log equation. And all you have to do is change this log equation to exponential form. So here we go. 4 raised to this box equals 16. And all you have to do is figure out, well, what goes in that box? 4 raised to what exponent is 16? Well, what do y'all think? 4 squared, right? So the answer is 2. So 4 squared equals 16. So 2 is your answer. All right, let's look at this one. Same thing. Equal box. Write as an equation. And then, so we're going to change this, this log equation to exponential. 5, watch what I'm doing, watch, watch what I'm writing. 5 raised to some number equals 125. Well, 5 squared is 25, right? So we know it's not 2. What about 3? 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, so the answer is 3. 5 cubed equals 125. See how simple this is? So all it is is just involving knowing this relationship right here, going from exponential to logarithm or from logarithm to exponential. All right, so let's look at this one. Equal box. 7 is your, is, is your, your, your base, so you're going to say 7 raised to what power equals 1 7. All right, now be careful. Don't say 1 because 7 to the first is 7, not 1 7. But what you got to remember is that you know, you know that 1 7 means the same thing as 7 to the negative 1 power. And so therefore, 7, 7 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 7, so the answer is negative 1. 7 to the negative 1 equals 1 7. Just make sure you remember you remember the, the ideas about negative exponents. So, so they have 2 to the negative 3rd. Remember, 2 to the negative 3rd means 1 divided by 2 to the 3rd, which is 1 over 8. Okay? So just, just make sure you remember, you remember these ideas. All right, so let's look at this one equal box. So 4 raised to what number equals 1 16? All right, now don't say 2 because 4 squared 16. This is not 16, that's 1 16. But you know, you know that, six, that 1 16 I can write as 1 divided by 4 squared, right? And then I can rewrite this as 4 raised to the negative second. So 4 raised to the negative second same thing we did here. 
4 raised to the negative second means 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. So therefore, 4 to the negative second is 1 over 16. So 4 raised to what power is 1 over 16? The answer is negative 2. Okay? All right, let's look at this one. Box. 7 raised to what power equals the square root of 7? All right, now be careful. Don't say 2 because 7 squared is not the same thing as this. This is square root of 7. 7 squared is 49. But you remember that I can write the square root of 7 as a rational exponent that becomes 7 to the 1 half. And so therefore, therefore we can say 7 to the 1 half equals the square root of 7. So the answer is 1 half. 7 to the 1 half equals the square root of 7. Same thing here, right? So, so 13 equals, I'm sorry, 13 to what, to what number equals the cube root of 13? Well, rewrite the cube root of 13 using a rational exponent, not a radical. So that becomes 13 to what power? Well, 1 third. So 13, 13 to 1 third equals the cube root of 13. So the answer is 1 third. All right. Okay, number 7. See, see, see it's not difficult, right? All, all it is is just you using this relationship. That's all it is. All right, so you want to find out what this log is. All right, set it equal to 2x two or a box or whatever you want to. But then once you, once you see you have a log equation, see the equal sign, log equation, you can then use this idea. Change this to, to an exponential. And, and, and then you, you really don't have to put a box here. You can just think in your mind, 15 to what power is 15? 15 to what power or what exponent is 15? Well, the answer is 1 in it. 15 to the first is 15. All right, let's get this one. 8 to what power is 1? 8 to what exponent is 1? Well, hope you remember that 8 to the 0 power is 1. So the answer is 0. This one? Box. 5 to what exponent is 5 to the 8th? 5 raised to what power is 5 to the 8th? Well, remember, one of the things you learned was that when the base is the same, then what else must be true? The exponents have to be the same. So, so 5 to the 8th is equal to 5 to the 8th. Very simple, isn't it? Okay, now we're going to skip 10 for right now, and we're going to come back to, to 11. Because we, we, have to, we have to review something about 10 first. All right, so let's look at 11. All right, so let that equal box. Okay, now here's how you're going to do this. So remember, you don't see a number listed here, right? Well, if there's no number listed here, what is it understood to be? It's understood to be 10. So that's your common logarithm. So you're going to say 10 to what power is a thousand. Well, 10 squared is a hundred. 10 cubed is a thousand. So the answer is three. Okay. Number 11. All right. So remember, no, there's nothing listed here. So that's understood to be a common logarithm. So that's base 10. So just remember that. All right. So your base is 10. So 10 to what power is the argument? Well, my argument is 10 to the 15th. So what do you think What do you think goes in this box then? 10 to what exponent is 10 to the 15th? Well, the base is the same. The exponents have to be the same. So 15. We're going to come back to this one. Let's go to this one now. Equal blank. All right, now let's remember. Natural log... Remember, natural log is a log with what base? Log base E. So the natural log of E means the same thing as log base E of E, doesn't it? All right, so just remember that. So this right here, this right here, this notation natural log means the same thing as saying log base E, and my argument is E. All right, so equal box. All right, so your base is E, so you're going to say E to what power is E? Well, E to the first is E in it. So the answer is 1. 
Let's do this one. Another natural log in it. So if you need to, rewrite ln as log with what base? Base e, natural logarithm. Now more arguments e to the 7, so don't forget to write that. Okay, say equal box. Okay, your base is e, so you're going to say e to what number is equal to the argument, and my argument's e to the 7. Well, the base is the same, the exponents have to be the same. So what does that equal? That equals 7. So, so the natural log of e to the 7th is just 7. Okay, let's look at 16. So 16, again, rewrite this as log with base e if you need to. So log base e of 1 over e to the 8th equal box. So your base is e, so e to what power? e to what exponent is the argument? My argument is 1 over e to the 8th. All right, now be careful. Remember, don't say this is 8 because e to the 8th is not this. e to the 8th is e to the 8th. This is 1 over e to the 8th. But you know about negative exponents. So 1 over e to the 8 means the same thing as e to the negative 8. And so therefore, e to what power is equal to 1 over e to the 8? Well, the answer is e to the negative 8. So the answer is negative 8. All right. Okay, we're going to come back to 17. Let's look at 18. All right, 18, so remember there's no... So this is LOG with no base listed. That's understood to be 10. That's your common logarithm. So I'm going to write this as LOG base 10 of 1 over 100 equal box. So let's change that. Let's change this ex, uh, log equation to exponential. So 10 to the box. So 10 to what exponent equals 1 over 100? That's a 10, I'm sorry. 10. 10 to what exponent equals 1 over 100? Don't say 2 because 10 squared is 100 not 1 over 100. But you do know, you do know that 100 is 10 squared. And you also know that you can write 1 over 10 squared as 10 to the negative second. So therefore, 10 to the negative second is equal to 1 over 100. So the answer is negative 2. Okay? All right. Now, let's go back to these three problems here. So we, we, we skip number 10, we skip number 13, and we skipped number 17. All right, now the reason is this. All right, so let's talk about this. So one of the things you learned when you dealt with, with um, inverse functions was this. All right, so let me find it. All right, so one of the things you learned was this. Okay, that, that inverse functions undo each other. So you see number four? So the inverse, f inverse of f of x is just x. So it's just this argument right here. So if two functions are inverses of each other and, and you, you are looking at their composition, so this is a composition, if you're looking at their composition, then you're just left with the argument, in this case x. So f inverse of f of x is x, f of f inverse is just x. So, so inverse functions, inverse functions undo each other. Okay? All right. Now, what that means is this. All right, so let's let's look at it this way. Okay. So So when we, when we got to this point right here and we saw that, that we didn't know how to get y by itself, we then discussed the idea that this, this y, which is the exponent, is defined to be a logarithm. Okay, And once you get y by itself, there's your inverse. So what that means this is this then. f of x is b to the x and the inverse, the inverse of an exponential exponential is a logarithm. So the inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. And so so once we get y by itself, this is your inverse. So remember once once I got y by itself, 
then that was the inverse. So we replace we replace y with with the inverse notation. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to replace y with the inverse notation. So if f of x equals b to the x, then the inverse will be log base b of x. Okay? All right, now, what, what we learned in a previous section was that, when we, when we talked about inverses, was that inverse functions undo each other. Okay, this notation right here. So that means then is this, f inverse of f of x is equal to x, okay? And so f of x in this case is b to the x, right? So I'm going to replace b to the x here. So that it becomes f inverse of b to the x. And then I'm going to, so this says, I go to my inverse function and wherever I see x, I replace with b to the x. So here's my inverse function. So then this becomes log base b of, and remember, wherever you see the variable x, you replace b to the x. And then we know that inverse functions undo each other, so you get x back. All right, now, here's, here's what, what you need to remember. The, this little part here is confusing for students to understand. So, so just remember, inverse functions undo each other. So, so these, these two functions, f of x and f inverse, are inverse functions. So they, they, they're going to undo each other. So you're going to get, um, so you're going to get x. The notation, what we saw here, is that f inverse of f of x is equal to x, whatever, whatever this is, and then f of f inverse is equal to x whatever this is, okay? So inverse functions undo each other. Doesn't matter if you place, if you replace f of x into the inverse, or if you replace the inverse into the function. They undo each other. When I use that approach here, I notice this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this right here, I'm gonna take this right here, f of x, which we know is b to the x, so that's this. And then to find this, that says I go to my func my inverse function, and where we see the variable x, I substitute b to the x. So here's my inverse function. Here's the variable x. I replace it with b to the x. So that's what you see here. But I know that these, these are inverse of each other. So when, when I take f of x and place it inside the inverse, I get x. So this is just x. The point's this. Whenever you're taking the log base b, of the same base raised to a power, then the answer is just the exponent. So then that goes back to this, right here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, it's, it wasn't one of those. Um, let me let me go ahead and do this. I'm so, I apologize for that. So let's write this as number 19. Number 19. So let's suppose you had log base 6 of 6 to the 4th power. Log base 6 of 6 to the 4th power. From what we just saw, those are inverses, right? Then if the base is the same, and if, if the base of the log is the same, and the base of the argument is the same, it's just 4. But you saw you could have easily gotten this right here by putting box right here. So he said 6 raised to what power is 6 to the 4th. Well, the, the base of the same, so the exponents have to be equal. So that's 4. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at this. f of f inverse of x. So we know that's equal to x, right? From, from a previous section. So this was a section on, on inverses. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace f inverse with what it's equal to. So f inverse is equal to the log of x base b. So this right here becomes f of log base b of x. Then that says I go to my function f, which is this, and wherever I see the variable x, I substitute this. So then, so then this becomes then, so remember it says I go to my function f, and wherever I see the variable x, I substitute 
this right here. So that becomes b raised to, and this is your new exponent, log base b of x, and we know that whatever that is, it's going to equal x. And so now we have this idea. So notice that the exponent is that log, the base of that exponent, I'm sorry, the base of the log is the same as the base that you see here. So if this and this are the same, then the answer is just the argument. So the answer is x. So then that takes care. So all this is, is dealing with the inverse function. So then that takes care of, of um, number eight, I mean number 10. Notice the base is eight, this base is eight. So the answer is just what? 42. All right, let's go to this one. So the other one was, was this right here. Don't let this confuse you. Don't let this confuse you. Remember, think of LN, think of LN as LOG with base C. All right, so LN 500 means log of 500 base C. So now we can use the inverse, the inverse idea. The base is E, the base is E, the answer is what? 500. All right, and then that, I think there was one more. Um, yeah, number 13. So number 13, so remember there's no base here, so it's to be what? So it's to be 10. So this is 10 log base 10 of 32, base is 10, base is 10, so the answer is 32. All right, and I believe that's it. So so the idea of, of, of logarithmic functions is not an easy concept for students. All right, I do understand that. It, it, is, it is difficult. But you notice, you notice that, that one of the things that helped you here was knowing this relationship. Knowing that relationship. And notice how well, we got a relationship. We got the relationship by, by using the idea of finding inverse functions. So all that, the idea of inverse functions and, and exponential functions and log functions, they all have a common relationship. And once you know how to change an exponential form to log form or from log form to exponential, it is fairly easy. All this is fairly easy to deal with. All right, so hopefully, hopefully this, this um, will kind of help you with, with some of the assignments dealing with, with logarithms and exponentials. All right, so that is it. Have a um, have a great uh, uh, day or evening, and and um, good luck with with the homework.